Serious. Is this like unofficial skip geology class day? <sighs> yeah, but there's no seniors in this class, so. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, well, um, But I suppose it's time to start. Um, we're very close to the end of um, very close to the end of this thing. Um, 
Our lecture today is called Selexia, uh, and we're going to kind of be picking up where we left off uh, with our diagram on, on 44, which I didn't even realize is the, the last page of our pink book. Uh, these geologic uh, exotic terrains of Washington State. Um, I will give you guys, uh, that's a good question, Christian. I will give you guys, uh, a, a little, well, I guess a practice test kind of on, uh, I'll hand that out either Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, the majority of what is on exam number three only covers the, the last chunk. Um, but that being said, there are also concepts that we've been building on throughout the class, and, and so we use some of those concepts. Um, you know, you're expected to be able to use the concepts from the earlier parts of the class, uh, but the but exam number three mainly focuses on uh, what we've done. Sense exam number two. So that would be uh, basically starting with uh, starting with our our Farallon plate lecture, um, Cascade volcanoes, St. Helens, Rainier, uh, arc volcanism in the Pacific Northwest, that kind. Uh, so this was this is our, our diagram on uh, on the last page of the pink book with our CRBs. We have our craton. We have our Kootenay arc. We have our Okanagan terrain. We have this big ugly thing that we call the North Cascades terrain. And then we have the Olympic Peninsula. And uh, today, uh, the topic of the lecture, or the, the title of the lecture is Seletia. And we are returning to the Olympic Peninsula. We, we did some work with the Olympic Peninsula a few days ago, um, identifying it as a subduction complex. So that's Craton. Kootenay, 175, it's Okanagan, 150, North Cascades, we said that was 150 to 80, and then we had this thing labeled as Olympic Peninsula, and we gave it the date of 50, 50. Um, The Olympic Peninsula is, uh, I, I kind of intentionally left a fair amount of information out uh, when we first covered the Olympic Peninsula. Um, and the thing that, the thing I would like to um, sort of draw your attention to, and you can even see it, um, you can see it on the, the Washington Geologic Map, uh, even probably from where you're sitting. Here's the Olympic Peninsula, and there's this stripe of brown, this stripe of dark brown that kind of wraps around the eastern side of the Olympic Peninsula. We have some of it down here. We have some of it down here. What is that? That stripe of brown, uh, we're going to give that a name. And I'm just going to make a much more simple stylized drawing of it. Uh, this red stuff, brown on the map, is called the Crescent Formation.
And the crescent formation is um, got its name because it is crescent shaped. Uh, but here's the crazy thing. The crescent formation is basalt. We just can't freaking get away from basalt in this class. There is so much basalt. Um, but this basalt is unrelated to our Columbia River basalts. Totally unrelated to the Columbia River basalts. It is much older than the Columbia River basalt. The crescent formation looks like age of crescent. Um, oh, crescent formation. Uh, we said 56 to 50. Million years old. Okay. So... This is, um, there's a couple of things that should be jumping out, uh, jumping out at you right now. Um, yesterday, we said the Olympic Peninsula, we gave it an age of accretion, and we said that it was 50 million years ago, 5-0, that this thing, this last blob of stuff, Landed and docked on the on the western edge of the Earth. The crescent formation is a big part of this Olympic Peninsula, this last terrain that it's hatched. Blue is this is the age of accretion. That's the age it stuck onto the continent. Fifty six to fifty. That's the absolute age of the rock. The absolute age of the rock. This basalt was still erupting as it was accreting to the continent, which is kind of a weird, kind of a weird thing. Um. So I guess I guess I'm gonna have to. I guess I just gotta go. I guess I just gotta go for it. Uh, I've taught this in a few different ways in a few different orders, and I think the way that I want to do this is let's imagine a little cross section here. Here's North America. Uh, let's say uh, we are looking at 55. Whoops, not 550. 55 million years ago. So 55 million years ago, we don't have an Olympic Peninsula yet. All this stuff's still out in the ocean. Seattle is on the coast. So 55 million years ago, here's Seattle. We have... Fifty-five million years ago, North America. Farallon, right? It's Farallon plate that is currently that's subducting fifty-five million years ago. And we have our last terrain just out at sea. Some ocean in here. The ocean here. You could probably stand on at Seattle and look across the water and see uh, this last terrain slowly moving its way towards uh, towards North America, riding on our Farallon Plate conveyor. Um, the title of the lecture is Celestia, and the name of this big gumdrop is Celestia.
I'm sure at this point you're like, all these weird names you're throwing at us, Kootenai, Okanagan, Celestia, what the hell, dude? Uh, geologists give these things names because we have to be able to talk about them somehow. So, Celestia is going to eventually be the crescent formation. Celestia is moving that way. It's going to stick on the edge of Washington, and it will be the crescent formation. So, crescent formation is basalt. So, Celestia, that's got to be some basalt. Celestia is out on the ocean floor. This basalt is 56 to 50 million years old. Our cross section is 55 million years. So this thing should be actively erupting. This should be a volcano, you guys. This should be a shield volcano making basalt and making a big pile of it on the ocean floor. How do we know it's a shield volcano? Two things. It's basalt, and the age is right. It's actively erupting when it's out in the ocean. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be a shield volcano. So, where is another place on Earth that we have a shield volcano Hawaii. sitting? Bingo, Hawaii. Exactly. Celestia is a Hawaiian island. This, it, imagine it as a Hawaiian island that is on a collision course with Washington State. It is actively building even as it is colliding with Washington. Is it big? Hell yeah, it's big. Celestia so uh, the uh, estimated, estimated, of course, uh, to be at 14 times the amount of basalt as in all of the Columbia River basalts. 14 times bigger than the CRB. 14 times more basalt. This is a big effing pile of basalt sitting on the ocean plate moving towards Washington. So this is a this is a, a strange situation. And geologists ha uh, have long struggled with like, okay, well, what is where is this thing coming from? Should have waited on the ages a little bit. But we've got this crescent formation. We've got all of this old basalt, 55 to 56 to 50 million year old basalt, smashes onto the Olympic Peninsula. And then all of this stuff in here, this is our this is our um, this is our subduction complex. But Celestia is the reason that Mount Olympus is taller. So let's see is the reason the, the Olympic mountains are taller than other subduction complexes. It's the reason that Mount Olympus in the Olympic National Park is a snow-capped peak year-round. It's over 10,000 feet. Most coast ranges, Oregon and California, you know, maybe two or 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet. Mount Olympus is really tall, and it's because this old shield volcano is smashed onto the edge of Washington, and then we've spent 50 million years scraping sediments up on top of it. Okay, so once Celestia docks, once Celestia attaches to the edge of the continent. We're done building Washington State. We might scrape some more sediment up there, but this crescent formation, or Celestia, it, you can 
almost use them interchangeably. Crescent formation is what we call the, uh, the basalt once it's attached to North America. And Silesia is what we call it when it's still out in the ocean. So if this is 50 million, 55 million years ago, see if I can give you a, see if I can give you, say, 45 million years ago. So Seattle. Now here's Celestia, it's all smashed up. And now we're also going to start adding on some layers of sedimentary stuff. So here's our here's our ocean sediments. With some thrust faults. Here's our modern day Olympic Peninsula. And underneath all of this ocean sediment, which of course there's ocean sediment down there, there's ocean sediment down here. Underneath all of this ocean sediment is all of this basalt. But 45 million years ago, this thing's not erupting anymore. 45 million years, now it's just a big pile of basalt. This would be the future sound right there. So, we just about have all of the tools that we need to start putting together a fairly comprehensive, fairly comprehensive story. But I don't think, I think I want to wait just a little bit longer. I want to, I want to revisit one other thing from yesterday, actually, before we move on. There's one thing from yesterday that I want to revisit, and that is this concept of how we got stuff from the for the North Cascades terrain. How did we how we got this stuff up here from Mexico? And um, I mentioned this Kula plate idea. The idea that there is an old tectonic plate. I promise you, this is actually connected to Silesia as well. Um, I realized I was, I was I left yesterday really unsatisfied uh, because I felt like I felt like I didn't explain this Kula plate concept very well. Uh, so I spent some time uh, diving into the literature, diving into scientific papers, and reading what the what the career geologists who study this stuff for a living say. And here's the idea. Here's uh, here's what we want is we want North America to be moving southwest as it, as it has been, as it does. And say 60 million years ago, we've, we've previously we've had this model where 200 million years North America has gone over the Farallon Plate. Uh, and here is the here is kind of the best current model is that we have something like 
think it was something like, like this. And so this is Farallon. This is Pacific. And this is Kula. These are all divergent plate boundaries. And so this is where things get kind of weird. And this is where it's kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to wrap your brain around this. 60 million years ago, the Pacific plate was moving kind of northish. 60 million years ago, the Farallon plate was moving kind of northeast-ish. And 60 million years ago, the Kula plate was moving north. And this is kind of hard to figure out. And I had to, I actually had to like reread a couple of papers to really get this concept. This is a divergent plate boundary. It's a spreading center. It is making brand new ocean crust. And so we would imagine if Kula's going north, Farallon ought to be going south. If Kula's going north, Pacific ought to be going south. And if this is spreading, what the hell is Pacific doing going north? Why isn't it going west? Each one of these divergent plate boundaries, uh, those arrows are just relative motion, relative to the other plate. And it took me two papers before I finally got to this, and I actually thought it was pretty interesting, uh, and I wonder who ever finally came up with this. These were not... Uh, how to say it. They were not balanced. They weren't, they, they did not spread at equal rates. Um, they said it was a two to one ratio. So in other words, Kula is moving north. We're making new Kula way faster than we're making new Farallon or new Pacific on this ridge. So this, this divergent plate boundary, the proper way to to show it would be that these vector arrows are way bigger than these ones <clears throat> and so we've got this kula north america relationship it's kind of a strike slip relationship it's kind of a transform relationship and as north america moves to the southwest Moving forward in time, you guys can hopefully see what's happening here. This is moving here. Let's let's put a little marker uh, in. Here's Washington State right here. Washington State. As as North America is moving to the southwest. Do you see how this, this uh, divergent plate boundary is moving further north along North America's coast? Um, Washington State keeps getting further away. If this is our little marker, Washington State keeps getting further away from where this divergent plate boundary is interacting with the coast. And eventually, if that's Alaska, whoops, I want blue. Eventually, this divergent plate boundary is going to subduct beneath Alaska, and that is where the Kula Plate went to die. The Kula Plate vanished underneath Alaska uh, many years ago. Sorry, I don't have a good date for the, the uh, vanishing of the Kula Plate. 
But we've got Kula moving north along the coast of North America, and this is your transportation device. This is how we are picking stuff up all the way down here and moving it up the coast from, what was it, 80 to 80 to, uh, from, oh, 150, 85 to 60 million years. There it is. Sorry. So 85 to 60 million years, we're doing this. Alaska is swallowing up the Kula Plate. This is getting further and further north, but the Kula Plate's northern motion is carrying stuff that has been ripped off of, uh, previously ripped off. This is some, this is some advanced stuff, but I, I want to, um, I want to make sure that at least you've heard it and at least you've seen a couple pictures of it because this story here and this story here, the Celestia story, really? I mean, really. These two things are related. These two things are connected. Okay. Then 19. I don't know if I'm going to have time to connect them today. I might have to connect them on Monday. I might have to connect them this afternoon. I hope. We'll try. Okay. Back to Silesia. We've got a big blob of big blob of basalt, a big island of basalt, a big Hawaiian island sitting out there on this plate, moving towards Washington State. It's a shield volcano, but it's not at any kind of plate boundary. Maybe, maybe you've got an idea. It's actively erupting. We need a heat source to cause it to actively erupt. There is a hot spot 55 million years ago off the coast of Washington State. Um, and actually when Celestia first docked, it was probably more like off the coast of Oregon or maybe even Northern California. But off the west coast of North America, there is a hot spot creating a Hawaii style volcanic island shield volcano and as this shield volcano comes in contact with north america it is still erupting the absolute ages of this rock are 56 to 50. it is still erupting even as it is coming in contact with north america so here we go Washington coast. Oh, that's ugly. That's super ugly. Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Utah. Good enough. We're talking about we're talking about there being a hot spot right here 55 million years ago 55 the closest hot spot where's the closest hot spot to that today where's the closest hot spot in this whole modern hot spot in this whole time uh, in this whole area. Should be automatic. Yellowstone National Park. We have a hot spot in Yellowstone today. Zero MYA. I 
I'm telling you that the hotspot that was sitting under Silesia 55 million years ago is the same hotspot that is sitting under Yellowstone National Park today. But this might be kind of challenging because North America is traveling to the Southwest and has been for this whole time. North America was moving Southwest 55 million years ago. So what the hell, man? If it was moving Southwest 55 million years ago, why isn't this hot spot up here right now? Why isn't it up in Canada somewhere? Here's the concept, and we're going to tie a lot of things together. We had a trail of Yellowstone calderas across the Snake River Plain, across southern Idaho, that abruptly stops 17 million years ago. 17. So we go from zero to 17 in a nice straight line, then it kind of vanishes. 17, that's also when the Columbia River basalts show up. Seventeen. So what do we got to do to get a hot spot here 55 million years ago over to northern Nevada, southern Oregon, 17 million years ago? And why don't we have more of these calderas? As it turns out, we do. And they are still actually, this is kind of crazy to me, they are still actually being discovered. But there is a line of calderas, more or less northwest to southeast across Oregon. Um, that are they're obscured by all kinds of other geology, but they are currently being being. There are currently geologists still finding them. There's a I read a paper a couple days ago about a new one that they found in Oregon. And they get older as you move to the west, and here is here is the idea last five minutes. The hot spot wasn't here. Silesia wasn't here. It was actually down here. But for the last 20 million years, there has been this clockwise rotation of the Pacific Northwest. It isn't that this hot spot was up here and the North American plate just suddenly took a turn in a different direction and went a different direction for a little while. The hot spot has been in the same place the hotspot has always been. But each of these calderas has been moved northward as the entire Pacific Northwest is being rotated clockwise, centered kind of around Pendleton, Oregon. This rotation, clockwise rotation, Clockwise rotation of the Pacific Northwest has been happening for 20 million years.
What else happened 20 million years ago? North America began to cross the East Pacific rise. San Andreas Fault began to form, and we get this transform plate boundary between Pacific plate and North American plate. We still have a little bit of subducting on the Fuca plate, old Farallon plate. Kula plate's way up there. It's underneath Alaska. It's long since dead. But this transform, the stresses from this transform plate boundary, the stresses from these two plates interacting, combined with the location of the craton. Remember the craton, Salt Lake City, up through here, and then it kind of cuts over like that. We've got craton here. All of this stuff is extra stuff that's squished onto the side. This is, the craton of the continent is way more stable than all of this stuff. <laughs> and Pacific Plate, San Andreas Fault, transform plate motion is actually driving Washington and Oregon getting squished against Canadian craton, which is causing clockwise rotation of the Pacific Northwest. <coughs> if you were to undo all of that clockwise rotation, it would line this these Oregon calderas up perfectly with our Idaho calderas and show one continuous line of southwestern movement of the North American plate. There is a quiet time in there that maybe we'll talk about a little bit next week. Uh, why we don't have as much eruption as uh, we do today. But I guess I'm out of time. So um, I hope you guys have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday morning. Thank you.